All right, a little late start, but we're here, UK Legends, episode three. Shout out to Average Joe, already in the chat with the thinking emojis, thinking, where the hell are these lot? <laughs> but we're here, all right? So let me know you can hear me. Let me know you're still there. Um, and uh, I'm just, yeah, obviously I'm joining on a mad one. Um very uh, very uh, unpre- very unprepared um because i'm five minutes late i was just running a test with um with our guest for today that, that held us up a little bit um but that's all good now it should all run smooth i'm just checking something on that end um that should, uh, yeah, that should all run smooth. I'm going to need you lot to let me know if we have any echo in or any problems once I bring in the guests. But anyway, so last two weeks we've been asking who is the first UK rapper? Who was the first UK rapper? We've come across Dizzy Heights. We've come across Nutriment. We've come across who we're calling uh, MC Allen. <laughs> we've come across a lot of people. Um we watched a bit of an interview last week with Bionic of London Posse, who put us on to um, Young Lion Sound and an MC called Daddy Willie, who I want to wire for that, go back to this week um, at some point later on in the show. Because I, I watching it back when I was editing, I just saw that he really talked about how he was doing a Cockney style. And I think when I listened to him, I wasn't looking for that. So I want to go and look for that again. Um, but right today, we are looking at we are looking at the women MCs. Yeah, I know uh, me and Blade had a whole thing where I was hotting him up for using the word female, but I guess female MC is a context that that word makes sense, right? But we're here to show respect to the women in the game, um, and it just so happens that. Um, a woman who was early in the in the game and who was there throughout all of the stuff we've been talking about so far has been in, interacting and engaging with the with the content and putting me on to stuff. She put me on to the Dizzy Heights live performance, um, uh, Electro Rock, I think it was called. I want to get that up again today as well. I want to get some other parts of that up. Um, so I really just wanted someone to come and join us who was who was there and can tell us about all of those kind of times and talk about. Um, potentially being the first female MC because that seems to be when I've asked who's the female MC that that's the name that's come up a lot um what I'm gonna do quickly now is just big up Johnny Coombs up in here in the comments with his name in green and the emoji next to his name because uh he's a member yeah he's a joined member join and become a member support the team but um Right, right now, wait a minute, I'm just finding, I'm just going to find the post and we're going to have a little look at what people might have said when I asked who was the first female UK rapper. Um, here we go. Here we go. Right. Sorry if I'm not with it today. Oh, I'm a bit behind. Well, that didn't work, did it? That screen didn't work. I'm having a bit of a problem there. Gosh. Why have you got to give me problems today? I've been running so good for so many weeks. Um, not allowing me to click on my screen that I'm adding. Let me just try and add a new one. No, that's not possible ever, actually, if I DP it. I have to be able to add this screen. Um, why would you do that to me today? All right, one second, guys. Let me just try a couple things. I've got the screen back up there. Oh my gosh, why would you do that to me today? I'm clicking on the screen button where I usually load it from and it's just saying, it's just not allowing me to open it to where I'd select the screen from. It's just not allowing me to. 
all right, I guess we are going to have to try and add a whole new um, option. But this is going to mess a lot of things up. Um, Johnny Coombs is saying that the sound is better, not audio fizz. What do I usually get an audio fizz? Is that what you're saying? Um, I don't want to do that. I don't want that screen on the on the screen. Remove that. Um, what I want to add is. Video capture, no, I can't even see how to, what kind of source, what source do I usually add this as, there we go. And it's not, oh there we go. There we go. Can you see that on the screen everybody? giving me a screen so usually I have this all in the corner ready and now I've got to put it in the corner what a madness huh what oh well we move it's there right um all right bless and now I'm going to put another one over here one second I cannot believe it this has never happened to me before it might have done actually but I don't think when I was let actually live <laughs> that's what I mean what a liberty we'll put that big on the screen boom there we go all right we got that's our two options that's all I need is them two anyway I'll, I'll ride out the show with them two two different screen two different options that to that right cool um so who was the who was the first female UK rapper I asked on air right Someone said Blondie, and it's hilarious because even in the other um, first shows when we say it was the first UK rapper, someone was saying Blondie, and I got I even got thrown from it. Like, is it like because yeah, I hear something about Blondie? Like, is Blondie the first? But the Blondie's not British. Blondie's American, and someone was actually going, yeah, Blondie's British. I think they actually might be saying Blondie was the first white rapper. I don't know. Maybe that's where that came from, right? Then we got Nina Cherry, which big up Nina Cherry. I'm a big fan of Nina Cherry. But she's Swedish. But she was over here though. So we can talk about her, right? And then here we go. VJ Ricochet said, Mystery MC of Family Quest, you know this. Yeah. And that was what I discovered. Um, and this is where I tagged her and said, Would you like to come on the show to talk about this? Um, and yeah. And then we've got Moni Love, which. I mean, I'm not going to talk about this too much. When I bring on Mystery MC, I'm going to ask her about these these people here and we'll work out the timeline with her, right? Obviously, I know... I, I listened to an interview with Moni Love recently on Drink Champs. And maybe I should pull that up, but it's going to be too long. If, if I can find the right clips of it. But I did hear her talking about coming up in the British hip-hop scene. And in my head, like... Because I, I didn't probably know much, but I just see her as someone who went to America so early um, and you know that um, also the same with Slick Rick right I didn't imagine her being here or being in, a, in the scene in any way no do you know what it was it was her and Estelle her and Estelle were having a conversation They done one of them's interviewing the other or whatever probably a still interviewing her and she was talking about what the British hip hop scene was like before she before she went up there and what she was doing here. Um so I guess we'll we'll ask Mr. EMC about that. Someone said Derek B obviously didn't read the uh, um woman part and Cookie Crew also obviously gets a mention Paris one is way later. Lady Sovereign are you mad? Um and then, you know, we've got a bunch of mistakes and that America people might mention. Honey G, I was meant to interview Honey G, I may do soon, but not for this show. <laughs> not for the UK Legends show. <laughs> Cookie Crew or Wee Papa. 
Um, so right after after we've had the, the guest, I'm gonna look through all of this, right? But firstly, I want to get up um, my UK rap map because Mystery MC is actually who put me onto this amazing resource as well when she sent me the link uh, to them on here. I've got to remember how to use it now. Resources, no. Map. How do I search it again? Can't just see search. So we're going to search um, Family Quest on here, right? Because I remember when she sent it on the first episode, I brought this up. And I just felt like, because I, I knew the certain artists I was looking into at the time, I was like, all right, this is going to show me where they are. Bring up their profile, man. Um, database, maybe. I reckon, yeah, search on database. And this is going to bring them up. So I didn't go through it properly at the time, right? So UK in the early the early years of UK hip hop are often forgotten. What with the limited recorded output and lack of documentation outside of those involved in the relatively small scene at the time. Nevertheless, there are a number of groups whose impact reached beyond their releases, and for that they should be acknowledged. One such group was Family Quest, who came up out of Islington, North London in nineteen eighty three. And that could be in my bit my bio. I came up out of Islington, North London in 1983 because it's the year I was born. So when I was born, these lot was already doing doing their thing in my environment, going at it, you know what I'm saying? So love that. Um, the group consisted of quartet of performers in Chico MC, Emix, Dirty Harry and Mystery MC. Mystery MC is widely considered to be the first British female rapper and, while outnumbered by her female counterparts, was given an equal footing and regularly stood out for her lyrical ability, receiving much praise despite being younger, white and a woman. They made their name initially as the resident MCs at Spats on Oxford Street, hosted by Tim Westwood. Um, and that's something I've heard about for years. You know what I'm saying so. Yeah, we can talk about that. that obviously, it's before my time, but I just remember hearing that, um, hearing that venue mentioned a lot, or the event. I don't know if that's the venue or the event or what it is, but um, I, I don't know if she sent me. I saw a flyer. I need to get that flyer up on the screen before the, before we finish this. Um, the event on a Saturday afternoon was a regular haunt for fans ranging from the age of 10 to 21 and was the core venue to get yourself seen and known in the, uh, I, don't know, I don't know how to pronounce that word, London hip hop scene. The group achieved their gig at the resident MCs by submitting a mixtape to Westwood's LWR radio show, catching the ear of the host in progress. So even though, you know, Tim, Tim is under the red flag at the moment, I always used to defend Tim to say that I think he did more for UK hip hop than people make out. That he's more active in the early days. Um, so yeah, we'll get into that. Family Quest first release would come in 1984 with Outer Space 84 rap recorded alongside Automation coming out on Jungle Rhythm Records. The track is considered by many to be the first song that created a distinctive UK sound, incorporating a reggae vibe and making a point of differentiating between the vocabularies of UK and US rappers, something that the likes of London Posse and Demon Boys would bring to the fore four years later. Ooh, that's big claims, man. I didn't see, I'm glad I ain't played this yet. You know what I'm saying? Because... And someone else said to me today, Demon Boys. We were talking about the, the accent thing, right? Someone said, well, Demon Boys done a London accent before London Posse. Um, and I was like, well, I always thought that was later or, or they were considered American before, but they were trying to correct me on that. So we're going to get into all these artists. We're not, like you say, four years later, we're not getting to them yet. Um, 1986 would be the key year for Family Quest after entering the winning entering and winning the King of the Streets competition on Mike Allen's Capital Radio show. Um, they were awarded the opportunity to release a single on Morgan Khan's Streetwave label. Streetwave was the sister label of Street Sounds who produced the cult electro LP series that were essential for early UK hip hop hoppers. The track to come out of this would be the early classic Sleepwalking co-produced by David Toop 
author of Rap Attack and the only UK recording to appear on Electro 13. This connection with Street Sound would lead them to being the only UK act to perform at the legendary hip hop show UK Fresh 86 at Wembley Arena, alongside many of the American heavyweights of the time like Africa Bambata, Grandmaster Flash and Mantronics in front of 16,000 people. Unfortunately, Sleepwalking would be the last recording the group would release. A lack of interest among the British public for this new sound dismissed by many as a fad who preferred the new romantic bands dominant in the charts meant they struggled to make an impact. Differences in opinion with street sounds would also result in them leaving the label. Nevertheless, Family Quest were an important group in the early years of hip-hop in London and should be remembered for what they contributed to a scene just starting out. And that's why we're doing this. Yeah, That's why we're doing this, um, this show right here. So... Let's get this up. It's annoying me very, very much that my setup is being awkward here. I'm gonna have one more attempt at trying to open my previous screen. It's not doing it. So let's just see how this looks over here. Cause it's not, it's not cropped the right way, but it will do. Yeah, that's all right. That's cool. All right, let's, we're gonna give this a listen. And then on the other side of this, we're gonna bring Mr. EMC in for a conversation. Johnny Coombs, anyone out there that's, that's, um, that's hearing that, let me know if that sounds okay, because I've got something on my screen that looks like, is it playing the audio twice? Are you hearing the audio twice, or is, is it so is it echoing in any kind of way? Um, obviously, because of my whole setup I had to do on the spot. Um, yeah, just let me know. Or let me know if it sounds all right. something about what something that's happening happening to every man every woman every child and also spreading the whole world wide it's like that's like that's i'm going out of my head i woke up in the park when i should have been in bed he said explain to me what you mean i says well doctor i've been sleepwalking i had my dinner about half past seven watched a movie fell asleep about half past eleven i dreamt i was making love in the dark when i woke up by myself all alone in the park hey doctor doctor am i losing my mind is sleepwalking something you commonly find well, it is, and it isn't, but it's also true. Now, explain a bit more. What happened to you? Well, I was sleeping. Okay. Uh, I can hear this. It sounds American, but I can hear some British. There is some British stuff in there. Um, like, I don't know the production, and maybe it's because it's a group. I don't know if I played a group yet. I don't know if there's been any groups in what I've played so far. But it's quite it's sick how you're hearing like certain different um, voices and ad libs coming in and stuff like that. That um. I don't think we were hearing on anything we've really played so far. So true. Now it's a bit more. What happened to you? Well, I was sleepwalking. Sleepwalking. Well, I'm telling the doctor, he goes, yes, yes, yes. So I hit the good part, I says, you guess the rest. As you see, it was me and my girl. She made me feel like James Cagney on top of the world. So if you sleep, walk, can you feel like a jerk? If you do, take a look at people going to work. Cause to me, it looks like they're all asleep every morning. Yeah, they're out on the street. I had to shake my hand. I don't know if he can, cause when he spoke, what he said is, I don't know who I am. So if you sleep, walk again and again. If you feel it's a problem, tell a doctor or your friend. I think this has got like, I don't know, I've, I'm feeling it still. It's got more of a like a attempt at kind of, of a, a hook that, you know, 
can be not catchy but like just stand out and it's got quite a bit of dynamics of where it kind of builds up the way the build up before the hook drops um where a lot of the other songs i don't know they had hooks but it was like like I, like I said i said they were trying to be novelty or whatever this has got a kind of concept to it or, or whatever um it's a bit a bit different still <laughs> Obviously, there's the DJs right in there. Why can't everybody live what's going on? Do you live your life? Why, why you living it wrong? Do you play with the shadows and dance in the night? Is your soul being twisted by your lack of insight? It's a mess of things you can't see through. Don't let it stop you understanding what I'm saying to you. You'll be held out by people when this for brains. Unless you look for the truth, because it still remains. They close your eyes, turn you blind. Without you realizing, so you won't mind. If you realize, then you would mind with both eyes open. You can't be blind. Trend. Listen up, my friend, to the message we send. Now you see the light, will you start again? Behind the curtain of knowledge is where the truth flies. You get there by fighting with them between the lines. If it's strong, you can do it. If you're weak, you can try. You may find the strength in the things you pass by. <laughs> Obviously that was Mystery MC's verse there, hard. Again, I'm hearing like I'm hearing certain words here and there where I'm hearing the kind of Britishness. The production on this is mad. Like just the, all the different stuff going on. Um, it's got obviously a bit of a rock element in there, but it's it's, it's not like overbearing or whatever. But I'm, I'm hearing a bit of that rock, like Run DMC in there. I don't know where it is in the timeline as well. In the in the bits where it's shouted, like when the backing comes in with like a bit of shouting. Oh. You're coming inside and who you are Put the pieces together, you should go far oh. Leave them out there to school themselves up When they try to get out and they find that they suck oh. In their dreams, we don't exist So they can't see us through a mean you hear that i'm gonna pull that up now they're doing the back-to-back -back part it's like the second voice that was coming in i can hear the british he said Tell, like say that again that was saying he didn't say like um However, they say it in America or whatever, but he, he, I, I can hear the Britishness in them certain lines there. Johnny Coombe said, kind of punky. In the magazine, but I heard it was to do with, with the mind. mind. Well, did you go up to her and give her a ride? Oh, just I had to walk on by. Say what? With a party to catch, I knew I had to fly. Right. All you gotta say about a girl sleepwalking, you should've took her to the party. Dressed her up freaky, freaky with a dreamer in your hands up. Fool. She wouldn't give you what you want, I ain't give you no ball. Shit, you can MC, you know me better than that. Because I got my own woman, I can give my rap. Kiss, kiss, baby, kiss, kiss today. Sleepwalking, what? don't uh, do it to the day. Hey, you can MC, what you got? Um, 
big, 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 big up Everton there. That was the sound of Family Quest Sleepwalking featuring our guest, um, Mystery MC, who we're going to get on very shortly. Um, but yeah, I just want to say big up Islington. <laughs> yeah, big up Izzy, as we as we came to call it years later. Um, and it's just one funny thing. Um, IBMC said Lorraine Chase did a novelty rap record in 1979. Yes, IB, IBMC's. Um, we did that last week and I didn't do it in the women i'm gonna to have to play a bit of it again today just to acknowledge it in this part of the conversation um but we did find that and the funny thing is it's like that lorraine chase record was before any of the male rapper uk rapper records pretty much so it's like that blows the whole thing out of the water but there is a conversation where it's like i argued this guy alan and, and blew it these guys were before dizzy heights and mystery mc corrected me to kind of say but they weren't in a hip hop scene. It's not. It wasn't hip hop because it wasn't part of hip hop culture. And I kind of get what that is as well. You know, I, I get that point. We can discuss it. We can go. Oh, here's someone rapping before then. Cool. But then there's another discussion of what was actually someone in hip hop culture. So it's like cool. We found Lorraine Chase. But Mystery MC here is in hip hop culture and she's involved in the scene. And that's why I want to get around to talk about it. But I just wanted to say something about Islington in that big up Joel Black. Um, Joel Black was like, um, you know, he, he a lot of people see him as the first person to like really blow up in rap from Islington, yeah, years later in like when UK rap became this viable thing selling like crazy. But even he was before it was selling like crazy. It was a mixtape era that 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 kind of built what came what became the big industry that came after rap. Um, and Joel Black often, I've, I've, I've had issues with some of his interviews where he'd be like, yeah, he's always saying, put my brother on the map. I've said this before. I've said it before. I don't know if he's seen it because later on, I started seeing him, like later on, I started seeing Joel Black doing interviews. He did actually did an interview where, because before he'd be, yeah, he'd be like, I put my brother on the map and act like there was nobody here in Islington before. But then I later see him do an interview on Ego Media on Bobby Kasanga where well, it was like, what was you hearing before, listening to? And he did say Mud Family. He also said, like, Mike GLC. But he said Mud Family Task Force as far as, like, what was going on in the borough, yeah? So I always have that kind of conversation about him to say, yo, he, Joe Black wasn't the first, yeah? And I'm all, and, you know, Heartless Crew are from the ends. You know, it calls from UK Garage, but they rap, do you know what I'm saying? Like, there's other lineages, right? So, um... I'm just really, I never knew about this. So I'm being educated right now. And this is like, there's a U, very like important UK hip hop group from Islet and Family Quest right here is like a big deal to me. So yeah, just big them up, man. Do you know what I'm saying? Um, Johnny Coombe said, sounds like Rodney and Sipo. Um, well, you think they sounded like, um, it sounded similar. Yeah, I mean, parts of it, parts of it. And I guess what that's, it said in the, in the, in the write up, right? That it kind of, led to what they did later. Um, he also said Beastie Boys. I guess he was saying that when um, I was saying Run DMC. But yeah, I could hear that Beastie Boys thing. Again, it's like that collaborative saying certain lines together and stuff like that. Um, Grizzle Leng said, 80s UK Izzy rap. It's Islet and it's all Ralphie. Yeah, I don't know. So yeah, Islet and's in the house. Yeah, Islet's in the house. We love that. Uh, I'm going to try and get um, Mystery MC straight on now. And uh, obviously I'm having a nightmare today. And um, the link, I've got to send her a link to make to help her to let her join. And it's come off the screen. So I'm just going to have to make another another link. But all good. It won't take me too long. Um, hopefully this is gonna work. And if I, I need you in the comments, just let me know if there's any echo in or anything like that. Um, cause I have to get her to join from a like side link, and for some reason that can cause certain bits of feedback here and there. Um, and if the, if it does echo, I can work out what I need to turn off. Um, so hopefully she's out there and ready to join. Um, yeah, she's seen the link. 
Um, we'll get her straight in here, hopefully. So this is our first, like, I'm, I'm real, real honored about this today. So this is our first guest. Like, we had a guest on the very first show, Rising Sun and um, Crazy, but they weren't like of the old school. They came on because they're UK legends as well from a, from another era. But they had a current thing to to talk about, right? Um, and that's why they were kind of there, right? Um, All right, you're there. One second, I've just got to add you to the YouTube. I've got to take the link from here and add you into the YouTube. Um, where? One second. No, that's the wrong one. There we go. This should do. It should work pretty easy. Ah. Uh, I think you're there. So, everyone, let me let me know that uh, you can hear. Am I am I calling you Mystery MC? That's what I've been calling you so far. <laughs> yeah, call me Mystery. Might as well. Mystery. Yeah. Well, look. Thank you for coming. Um, I really appreciate it. Um, we've got a comment here straight away. Um, well, I DDI from early eighties till now still do. Guess I was a New York. It was a New York influence because I got that American twang from the eighties. This is Grizzle Lang. Um, Johnny Coombe said, "Oh, I'm from Suffolk." All right, you lot, just let me know. Let me know that you can hear mystery and you, um, and everything's going, everything's working out. But um, are oh, you flipped upside down somehow? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You was upside down on the screen there. But look, thank you, thank you so much for coming. Um, hold up, hold up, hold up. I can see you're not, your sound is off. One second, one second. We're definitely having a sound problem. I was hearing you and suddenly I'm not. So I don't know if something's been pressed. Um, one, two, one, two. What's going on? Pulling up your your audio settings. Uh -uh. Um. I'm not hearing you. Is there anything on your end that's got like a mute or anything? Grizzle Leng said, "Can't hear mystery though." Could you hear her when she first joined? Because I could hear her when I, when she first joined, and I can't. Yeah, maybe just leave and rejoin. It's all good, all good. All right, bear with us, people. Bear with us. You lot are the ones getting the raw live version. Obviously, afterwards, I edit these parts out. You can. I've worked out now on YouTube that even when you go live, you can chop parts out of it afterwards. I can hear you now. Uh, I've got oh, a me? I can hear you, but I need to. I need to see if the. We need to make sure the the viewers can hear you. But um, all right. Can you hear Mystery now? I can hear her. Um. Yeah, I can see you. I can hear you. All right, Grizz, Grizzle Leng, let me know if you can hear her. Give me a mic check, one, two. One, two. One, two, one, two. Oh, you are echoing, though, but um, cool. You're there, though. You are there. Um, all right, I think I know how to stop the echo as well because it's happened with Thing last time. So, yeah, everyone's saying, I am, uh, IBMC is saying they can hear. Um, so, listen, thank you for being here. And thank you for your contributions on the first um, couple episodes. Before we get into the female MC, um, 
what was what what have you i can't remember what you said i know you've told me to put some respect on uh dizzy hyatt's name what who do you think the first uk rapper was and was this something that was discussed at the time that was kind of like known like did, or did anyone care about that it was genuinely genuinely acknowledged that it was dizzy heights even back yeah. then okay know. okay sick so so even so and when he and when people said that was that based on like because he put a record out was there other rappers but even before that was people already rapping like what was the how did it kind of happen he'd he'd put a record out and he just seemed to have been on the scene somehow before anyone else it was like he was like a bit of a legend in his own time yeah okay yeah. so that and that was just that was just what it was it was a knowledge right um johnny coombe saying you're quiet so i've turned you up quite a bit let me know if she's a bit loud or not um so is that something was that was you there for that was you in, in the scene at that time already kind of rapping at these events um before the, before his record came out uh when did his record come out 1980 was it 80 yeah yeah so our first release was 1984 i didn't rap until 1982 1983 after okay. i saw wildstar so okay so that's that when was... you actually that was a start for you yeah okay sick yeah um, so I'm just trying to, so I'm just trying to work out kind of like a picture of the scene at the time, like what was really going on. Obviously, I just read for you guys, um, bio and the stuff at Spats was obviously very important, right? Was there anything before that? That was there places people were gathering before that? Oh, your sound's gone again, but you know what? Your sound's gone. You've turned, you've gone upside down again, and your sound's gone. So I don't know if that did it. I don't know if to turn it upside down. Did the um, Johnny Coombe said it was perfect volume a second ago? We were perfect until <laughs> until that. Um, we may have to leave and come back again if it's uh one sec. Though. Let me just try something. Yeah, it's gone again. I don't know what it was. Whatever it was when you turned the phone around, it's, it's killed the audio. Yeah, there you're back. Uh, let me just. Might bring you straight. Me? Yeah, I can hear you. But I might have to turn you up again over there. It's all right. So, uh, yeah, whatever it is, I'm trying to avoid them. Um, and I'll turn you up. Yeah, cool. Um, I, IBMC said Dizzy Hat's Christmas rapping was 1982. Is correct, actually. That's right. There was something else that was 1980 that we were looking at. I think maybe, yeah, it was the other. That MC Allen Yeah. No, Nutriment yeah. was later. Nutriment was after Dizzy Heights. No, no, Nutriment was, was before Dizzy Heights. But then he'd be the first one. Oh, no, hold on. No, sorry. No, <laughs> sorry. I'm old. I'm old. It was a long time ago. They were close together, though. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> nah, yeah, they were very close. They were close. And I think I play. I think that I, I, oh. I read that it was like the first political um, song at the time. So cool. Um, We'll get to your story, I guess. So, yes, what year did you say? 1986? Oh, the sound has gone again. I don't know how the sound can keep cutting out. What is going on? One second, one second. Are you with me? Nah. That sound is not having it. That's very frustrating. Yeah, Nutriment was 1983, IBMC has said. Um, I don't know what, your sound just keeps cutting out. I don't know if it's the f something I'm going to send you. No, no, that won't do anything. One sec, I'm going to try and...
take her out there and bring her back in myself. Yeah, the sound is gone. The fat sound is fully gone. Um, one sec, I'm gonna try and um, mess with the settings over here. Hello, hello, hello. Nah. Properties. All right, I'm going to change something here. Control the audio from over here. Um, one second, just get, I'm, I'm nearly there with an idea. Nah, it's not working. Um, so guys, I'm trying, I'm working hard here to try and make this work. Um, got the guest here but we've got no sound control I'm gonna have to uh, see if she can leave and come back one more time but if it's not working we might have to we might have to regroup we have to work out whatever this problem is and regroup The only thing that seems to work is when you've left and come back, but and then it seems to work again, but then I don't know why it's stopping again. No idea. No, no idea. Um... I'm not seeing you anymore either. I can see you on the back end, but not this end. Not on the screen. Oh, I want to refresh. Refresh. Oh, she's gonna have to retrain. Uh, hopefully we're gonna get there. If not, I might have to re rework this out. Oh gosh. Johnny Coombs has dropped me a message, he's saying. So I'm going to check that out. See if he's um, worked something out. Uh, ah, he just messaged me to say he's got, he's got a... Um, try one more time, I'm just saying to um, Mr. E. Um, so yeah, all good, all good Johnny Coombs. Oh, there she is, but I can't hear. I can't hear a thing. Um, oh, she's gone again. And I can't hear a thing again. <laughs> I can't hear a thing even when she's coming back now. Ah, absolute nightmare. Um,
Yeah, proper, proper nightmare. Hello? I think now I might hear ya. No. Ugh. Let me click on your audio settings. Noise gate off, mic delay. iPhone, iPhone microphone. There's a button that says refresh. I can't do it. I can't. I don't seem like I can do anything. One sec. Let me just add you onto the onto the screen here. Oh, there you go. <laughs> we're in, and we're we're in in a different way than we were before. I don't know how that happened, but I'm hearing your thing for a different channel. So hopefully this one lasts. Um, where was I? I was kind of getting to the point of your record. You said it came out in 1986? 1984. Okay, six. So 1984 was... So it's two years after um, Dizzy Heights. And what would you say? How many? What did it say? Four years before London Pussy? Something like that. What is really... I can see you all right. <laughs> it's cold today, isn't it? I see you wrapped up warm. <laughs> I hear you. Um, that's why I got the hoodie on at least. But um, all right. So we talked, and I've read a few things there about um the kind of UK accent claim, right? So, you know, London Posse also often get credited as being the first to rap in a London accent, UK accent. Some of these parody records I found are already in a UK accent. How did, was that a conversation that was happening for you at the time? Oh. And we cut out again. We cut out again. Do you know what I might have to do? Big up Grizzle Leng, 83 the first, I'm sure. What I might have to do um, is rearrange this and like record it rather than do it live. I might have to record this. Um, I might have to record this with her and play it on the show. Um, I'm just going to let her know. Um, I don't know if she's seeing it here. Just letting her know um, that I might just regroup. Um, I'm really, really quite annoyed with that, though. You know, it's just technology. When you're doing things live, it's kind of just how it is, I guess. Um, uh, she's put, a, she's put a little thing to me, but um, cause I don't know what else I'm gonna do. I'm trying out here. Um, yeah, Grizzle Leng said it might be Mystery's Wi-Fi. That's the thing. It, it could be. It could be her Wi-Fi. She's saying cool. So I'm gonna I'm gonna regroup on that. But I'm disappointed. I'm annoyed because I thought that was I was really excited about doing that, and it, you know, it felt very special for to me to do that. But that don't mean it ain't gonna be special, and we ain't gonna do it because we will do it. We'll sort that out. You know what I'm saying. But I, I did want her to be here while I was discussing the female rappers. But um, I'm not only gonna discuss female rappers today anyway. So, I guess we keep moving and we go through some of the other names, right? Um, we've played um, Family Quest and Mystery MC, and I think, uh, you know, I think we can credit that she was the first female rapper in the UK. Um, I'm not going to get into that super load more because I want to I want to I wanna, um, talk to her about it and um, hear, you know, hear her story here. I want to ask her about current rappers, female rappers or not, and everything, do you know what I mean? But I'll, I'll do that at a future point. Um, I want to, like I said, today I want to go back to some of the reggae guys as well. Um, and there's a couple other things I want to go back to. Um, but let's, since we're on the, the female conversation, I think we should um, start by continuing there. Um, 
So I'm gonna put this back on the screen. Um, this said, this is Andre Lewis said, I don't know who, but one of the MC definitely UK, 1985, and there's a link here. So let's just click on that. Davy DMX, the DMX will rock. I don't know if this has been mentioned by anyone. Let's Google this before we even, because this is one of the uh, MCs. Let's put them into the UK rap map, map um, database. If they're on here, if they're not on here, then I don't believe it. Nope, not on there. Let's give him a Google. David DMX is an American musician and producer. Nah, I'm not hearing it, man. I'm not. I'm not hearing nothing about UK here yet. But if there's a if there's a UK rapper on it, we saying there's a female UK rapper on it. Um, are they gonna say UK? Um, no, I can't see the word UK in there. <laughs> Alright, we're gonna leave that one out, but I might do some further research on it further on down the road, right? Um, so it was Moni Love, the first to have mainstream success. We're gonna have to research all of these timelines. I wanted to ask Mystery about these timelines, I wanted to ask her when she remembers these names coming up but let's talk about Moni Love then um but I want to look at is her obviously she became a huge celebrity and stuff but is her Wikipedia gonna tell us when she started rapping in the UK I don't know I don't know if this is even gonna tell us this right but it got her listed known by stage name Moni Love is a British rapper actress and radio personality known for her singles during the late 1980s and 1990s so her debut album came out in 1990. Um, it spawned the singles Moni in the middle. Um, this is definitely later. Do you know what I'm saying? Obviously, she might have had, let's just click on her discography. She might have had some singles or other stuff, and she might have been out there rapping. But, um, yeah, what, what I'm seeing here is later. And I don't want to jump that far forward yet. So whether it's women or not, I'm saying I don't really want to jump that far far, far forward yet, because we ain't done, we ain't done eighty five yet. <laughs> We've only gone up to eighty four. I think eighty four was as far as we'd gone already. The last episode, and Family Quest today was eighty four again. Um, someone said Fatcha, you know, <laughs> Fatcha, Fatcha was the first. Uh, um, Mystery sent me a link here to something as well. Um, Yo, hip hop heads, has anyone got more footage from this Brixton jam? Oh, thanks for big up Rodney P. Um, Rag Gerbrand said, Didn't you tell off Blade for saying female? Alexis JP said, Mystery from Family Quest. Um, another one from Only Love. Here's the flyer. Boom. Look at that. Iconic man. Spats 85. Family Quest featuring the UK's first female MC, Mystery. There it is in writing, yo. Do you know what I'm saying? And this is Westwood's night, isn't it? So Westwood put that on a flyer. Yeah? So I've got to ask about some questions about Westwood, man. When we do this interview, we're going to have to get into it. Westwood and the Universal Zulu Nation. Yo. All sorts of... All sorts of... Like, all sorts of... Yeah. Red flag names popping up here, but cool. That's, yeah, that's iconic, man. Look at that. I think we answered the question already, right? We answered the question. Um, Genesis Elijah said, the first I ever heard was Phoebe One, yeah? And I said, I think probably, when he said that, I thought probably me too, because the, the first UK hip hop I heard was Mud Family before I was in it. And then I got the record by Funky DL called The London All Stars, and it had all these rappers on it. I've told this story before, and that at some point I will do that record. That will be a bit of the start of a certain era for me, because all the rappers on that record, I went and started looking them up. Yeah, the ones who had stuff out from Rodney P, Black Twang, MCD, um, Phoebe One. She was on that record, so that, I was like, "Yeah, do you know, what? I think Phoebe One probably was the first that I heard as well." And this is another woman on that record as well. I can't remember. Um, Tony D said, "Betty Boo," 
Cookie Crew, Nefertiti. Um, and Steve G said, mystery, yep, British accent too. And that's what I was just trying to get to the bottom of her, whether she, you know, whether they felt they was in the British accent and how they felt about that. But look, we'll get to that conversation. I may have to keep it moving from this a little bit because obviously I wanted to like lift this conversation from there. Yeah, but what I'm going to have to show you just, just in the... Um, it. Oh, I just had this up by the way. Arms House Underbelly Full Doc. I'm watching this probably tonight. This looks uh, serious. I'm sure I've heard about this documentary before. I don't know if it was never released. Underbelly Full Documentary brought to you by Arms House to your mum's house pod podcast. Finally, it's here in its glory and joy. This is like a graffiti, a UK graffiti documentary. I'm sure. I don't know if it's a DDS documentary or what. I can't remember. Yeah, I, I know this is significant. But um, anyway, that was just on my screen. Um, so wait, I just want to go onto my channel because I want to show um, just a little um, little piece of Lorraine Chase. This is not um, <coughs> this is not the Scot Scottish, Scottish one, but it is someone claiming that there's another Scottish record before the one we put out as the first Scottish record, right? Um, so we're gonna look that up as well. Lorraine Chase. I mean, I could just play the record and show it again. I'm going to show a bit of myself reacting to it, just just for context on this female thing, because we're giving it to Mystery MC, but this record here did come out in 1979, and someone said it in the comments. It's the first rap record of all time. That's even before Americans. Come on, man, come off of it. Lorraine Chase. It's nice here, isn't it? Well, that sounds British. 1979, London Airport song. Come, let's just look at the um, London Airport. I mean, Luton Airport, sorry. Luton Airport. Ah, wait, let's get to oh, ask this guy. But... Hi, hi, in the middle of the street. Hi, I replied as I looked to the side and I thought it'd be very nice to meet. Okay. How about a drink? Well, I started to think. Caught me, man. Because a wink, I replied. It wasn't very far to the nearest bar and I was sitting on a stall by his side. I got used to the gloom and gazed around the room. If my head had been a top, you could spin it. I looked about and started to shout. It's nice here, isn't it? <laughs> it's nice here, isn't it? This is slightly a banger, I'm not gonna lie. It definitely sounds like rapping, isn't it, Sam? I just want to hear what I said about it. You know, um, try it, though, King of Sting. Yeah, I know you've been to very gay parties. Yeah, stop trying it. You told <laughs> me before that you were on grand. You go to gay parties every weekend. Um, anyway, I've got a dispute. Uh, Mystery MCs. Um, Claim to be in the first UK female rapper because the first UK female rapper, if this is true, if that when did when did rappers do that come out? Because someone's claiming that came out before rappers do that. I don't I, again. I don't know if it's that song. Again, it's 1979. So rappers do that came out 1979. Ian Jury come out 1979. So we're basically throwing. I hadn't even thought about that. Like the lineage with American rap. British people had rap and stuff. No, we didn't call it rap. It was. Uh, I want to get that off. I, I've already gone past the bit. I, I, I said I just wanted to play where I, I said it for the context that this is like the first British rap in a British accent by the by the look of things, right? Um, what I'm gonna do instead, we're gonna go to some other stuff. I want to go back to. I, we're not move, We're not even moving on from this question. If I'm honest, I mean, I think we've answered it, and I think Mystery just came and, and confirmed it that it was very accepted that Dizzy Heights was the first UK rapper. So, you know, we've got to kind of respect that um, on that level, on, on, on the fact we've probably answered the question with that. Um, then we're going to start looking at what came next in, in certain um, factors, right? Um, but I want to look at, like, there's a couple of things I've been sent, right? So I've been sent the thing with Dizzy Heights. Um, what was it called? Was it Electro Rock? What was it, what was it called? 
Electro Rock 1985, right? I, I played this just to play the Dizzy Heights bit, but I skipped five minutes. So I'm just going to play the first five minutes today to get something. Let's see what else we got in this, yeah? I'm not going to watch the whole thing, but let's watch some of it. Um, big up All City Steve, because All City Steve has also sent me uh, an interview um, with someone who he says breaks down the whole kind of history of the early, early days. Again, very long interview. Not going to do the whole thing, but we'll do a little 10 minutes of it or something. I want to, let's start looking at some interviews, um, some other people talking about about these things, right? Not, what, why is that copying? Same money, love, man. I'm trying to copy and paste this from my phone. Uh, yeah, actually, let's copy this whole message. Cool. First seeing, you know, people like... All right, so this is DJ Greg Wilson, yeah? I'm gonna just give this a look. DJ Greg Wilson. Um, that sounded pretty loud there, so I'm gonna turn it down a little. Um, UK hip hop history, Buffalo Girls, Electric Wild Star, Star Wars, um, Planet Rock, Broken Glass. This is a two hour interview, we're not doing the whole thing, but we're here, we're here researching, so let's look this guy up quickly first though. Can we get a quick, is he on Wikipedia? Yeah, he's got a Wikipedia page. Greg Wilson, born 1960, is an English DJ and producer associated with both the early 1980s electro scene in Manchester and the current disco re-edit movement. He's also a writer, commentator on dance music and popular culture. Um... Alright, so this is the hip hop written in his thing. Is a thing under here that he says British hip hop is listed under British hip hop DJs, but hip hop is not written in his Wikipedia, which is interesting. Rap is rap, and that's the biography. Uh, here we go. It's something to do with rap. Um. In 1987, Wilson began to manage and produce Manchester's Ruthless Rap Assassins and sister band Kiss AMC. The Rap Assassins released two critically acclaimed albums via EMI. I don't know nothing about this. I don't know these guys. See, I don't know. I think I know about UK Hip Hop. Um, We're a British hip hop group from Manchester. Obviously, this is a few years on. So, let's just see. Album 1990... Yeah, we're gonna to get to these lot later, but that's 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 showing a connection to him and and hip hop. Obviously, electro, all of these other kind of scenes were relevant to us um, and connected to what happened in hip hop here. Um, in in two, 2011, urban artist, urban artist, roots maneuver. Get out of here, man! About urban artist, yeah, just roots maneuver, man. Put some respect on his name. Um, Roots Maneuver would hail their music as the roots of grime. Whoa. Moving back to the north, Wilson would make further records between 1990 and 1993 with Mind, Body and Soul. Boy. I mean, this this looks like an interesting person, doesn't it? Um, yeah. All right, we'll have a little look about this interview, man. Is it got? Is it broke up into any sections? No. Um, Grizzle Leng said, "Ah, oh, man, UK rap history gets like a spider web because so much not documented back then as much." That's exactly it, and that's why I wanted to do this show, bro. Do you know what I'm saying? The early Roots Maneuver stuff was kind of grimy rap. Yeah, it's true. It had, the thing with Roots Maneuver and the connection with Graham, it's not like he was doing the. Grime tempo specifically or whatever or flows, but his production had that gritty bass line in it. Do you know what I'm saying? And like maybe this guy did as well. Do you know what I'm saying? So I don't know. Like last two episodes, I've just been playing who was the first UK rapper and just playing songs. Yeah, just one song, this song after song after song, and I've avoided doing this because this is a two-hour interview. I can't like sit here and listen to the whole two hours. I mean, I can. Don't get me wrong, I can. You know I'm saying I'm in no rush. There's no rush. There's no rush to get all the way to Digger D. Yeah, we're gonna get to Digger D one day though. We're gonna do the entire history. But um, you know, I I, I want to play more interviews and um stuff like that. 
Um, Grizzle Lang said, Grit, we called it. Yeah, Grit, UK Grit, before it was dubbed Graham. Really? I've got a blur. I'm having nothing but technical problems today, you know. Nothing but technical problems today. Today's show is problematic. And that's why maybe I'm cool with just doing some long form interview stuff on that today because next week we'll get back to all of the all of the songs and that. But let's give this a go, man. Let's let's check out what Greg Wilson's got to say. Right on the decks and people doing graffiti and you know, it blew his mind and that's why I think he come up with the idea as well to think about, about Buffalo Girls and you but know I mean, oh, it's right. amazing that are you not hearing that? Are you not hearing that? It's coming out of a different channel. My thing is giving me nothing but problems today. Let me know if you're hearing that and let me know if it's loud. Um, cause that's, it's moving a bit mad if I'm being honest with you. Oh, I know why. One second. No, I know exactly why and you're probably not hearing it. Um, oh, that was probably what, hap what actually cut off... Um, Mystery MC. I might have just worked out what cut off Mystery MC, you know. Which is a bit of a frustration. We could give that another go. But I'm gonna do what I'm gonna do with those, I'm gonna do I'll, I'll, I'll do it in between. I'll do it see if she can do it next week. And um I'll give a proper t good test run and make sure everything's running real smooth. But I've done that before and then come here and it's been a mess as well. <laughs> um you know, rap historians trace rap back to medieval UK times. No way. You were saying, you were saying there, was U, there was rap in the UK First before scene, America. You know, people like on the decks and people doing graffiti and, you know, it blew his mind. And that's why I think he come up with the idea as well to think about, about Buffalo Girls. And, you well, know. I mean, it's amazing that you got that story from him because, you know, this is, this is what drives me crazy is that someone like McLaren, I look at 82 as being the point where we know hip hop is going to stay. Or, well, we know rap is going to stay, let's put it that way. Now, you're looking at, that's a nine year span. And I think in that nine year span, the people who were involved in that scene and that community, they know how they want to do it. And it was all about keeping it real back then. I'll tell you a very important club, like, you know, in London, was yeah. a, it was a club in 1981. Um, and the club was called The Language Lab in Soho. Well, that it, goes into Funk Bolleton, who you're talking that's about. That's kind of the first time as well that you were seeing like breakers live you know in london on stage at this um, new york city reptile 1982. exactly so, i've said this before and, and it, it for me it's the example of culture shock in that moment mm. within the faces of those kids everything changed and we watched it again and again it wasn't worth going back to a club night because it was like the aliens had landed and walked in the door, the break dancers and how, you know, this thing was all just unfolding. Bit. Yeah, a lot of comments here from, um, from Grizzle Leng. Um, the most, it was called Flighting. Yeah, yeah, I've heard of that as well. Um, the most famous surviving exchange is the Flighting of Dunbar and Kennedy, which was performed in the early 16th century by William Dunbar and Walter Kennedy for the court of James... Um, James the uh, was that fourth a medieval rap between battle between two clever men. It featured the first recorded instance of poop being used as an insult. Yeah, I studied the history of rap years ago and came across it, it was the first rap battle recorded in sixteenth century. Yo I'm gonna come back and look this up, man. I'm gonna come back and look this up. I might actually look it up after I do this a bit, or I might pull it up. We had something. I don't know if you saw the last episode, but we had something on that was from the 1800s, but it was like theater. It was like a theater thing, and they were calling it. I'm gonna forget what they were calling it now. They had a name for the type of thing, but it felt it's, it kind of sounded like rapping, and it was British as well. Um, so is this something that I can look up? Yeah, like can I look up? A version of this because even the one we played last time it wasn't the original but it was a performance of it from the 80s or whatever um yeah if i can look something up to actually play i will this seems like um i don't know if this is a long intro or they've just gone straight into it because i can't tell if this is actually playing like snippets of what's to come in the interview um um Grizzle Leng said, yeah, it might be worth it. Never looked any further. Dramatic on stage sort of thing. I mean, I'm interested in that because it sounds like battling, right? That sounds like a rap battle. Like, 
I'm on his finest. I'm medieval rap battle. Yo, that's crazy. If I had it before us. You know what was probably gelling it together, Greg? Was probably like the Zulu Nation. I don't think this track gets anything like the credit it deserves in terms of, you know, a kind of stepping stone milestone on it on hip hop. And that's Magic Swan by Houdini. Oh, what made Danny so good? Was it kind of like, you know, the whole package, like the speed, the technique? Like, you yeah, know, he had, he had all the moves. He, he looked the part. He was a real compact guy, you know, and, and I remember him telling me um, that when he was learning windmills, how he, you know, for hours and hours, he said his, his elbows were bleeding. And it's but, difficult to explain to someone how a Patty hmm. Rock or an Almafiche sounded when you hadn't heard it ever before, and it was. The, oh, it was, you it was, go, I was getting good, like, goose, like goosebumps. Yeah, because it was the future that had given me a tape of We've Got a Rap Crew, and that was the Ruthless Rap Assassin. And it struck me at the time that the foundation. I'm going to jump forward a little bit. Because, right, like I said, it seems like we're, seems like we're showing all this. On this week's show, I have someone oh, we who lives and breathes music, who started DJing in 1975 at the early age of 15, who grew up in the era of Motown, soul, funk jazz funk, early electro and rap music. We are going to be delving into the vaults and taking it back, way back, back into the day when we first heard tracks like Rapper's Delight, Planet Rock, John's and Crew, The Message, Man Parish, and all these incredible music that blew our minds. He also managed and uh, the Wicked Breaking Crew called Broken Glass from Manchester and produced the uh, style of the streets track and also managed the UK rap hip hop group, the Ruthless Assassins. I'm really excited to say we have the incredible, the one and the only Greg Wilson in the place. Yes, Greg. Oh, yeah. oh, it's great. It's an honor, mate, to have you on board. All City Steve yeah, knows how to do an intro. I've been looking forward to talking on this level. We've had a couple of exchanges over Instagram and, and yeah, you know, a little bit of history and getting back into those days. But I'll tell you what, the first thing I want to do, actually, before we kick it off, I want to give a massive shout out to everyone who paved the way. I mean, we can't mention literally everybody because, you know, we'd be here forever. But you know who you are. And uh, basically, anyone watching this, please leave a comment uh, below somewhere and let us know, you know, how basically rap and hip hop uh, kind of developed for you. Um, but let's, I'll tell you what, Greg, let's talk about uh, like the early rap. And uh, how the scene was kind of uh, developing back in the uh, back into like say 1979. I mean, back then there was two pivotal tracks, wasn't there? Obviously, Rapper's Delight, and then yeah. slightly later, about a few months later, you had Curtis Blow with um, obviously Christmas, yeah, Christmas, rapping. Christmas rapping, yeah. And uh, yeah, I mean, in between that though, I, I remember um, uh, I had an import by Lady B to the beat, y'all. Um, mm. I mean, I, I think uh, I'm not wrong in saying that was the first release by a female rapper. So, you know, that's an early uh, track. And an that's interesting that we're hearing that randomly on this. Obviously, he's talking American, right? Who did he say, though? Let's just look that up out of interest. I know we've got to stick to UK on this show, like we really do, but... Um... Early uh, track and an important track that you don't really hear very much about no. at all. Uh, yeah, I mean, in between that, though, I, I remember um, uh, I had an import by Lady B to the beat, y'all. To the beat, y'all. Um, Lady B. Let's... I feel like I'm going to know that. I mean, I'm not going to play this much because, again, it's not, it's not British, but... Enough, yeah. I, I, I don't think I did know the record, but um, I just want to read something about it to see is that considered, yeah. Wendy Clark, born 1962, better known as Lady B, is an American female rapper. She is one of the earliest female rappers in hip hop and one of the first to record a single to the beat. Your was in 1979, but this is what I'm saying that's crazy. That's the same year that Lorraine Chase made that rap record. So, like, I always looked at, like, this is something we did a little bit later, but it's like we were doing it from the beginning. We were putting out records. And even if you want to go call cool, 82, 
Dizzy Heights is a couple years later um, to them actual first rap records. It, it's only just around the corner. Um, mad. I I want to play a bit more of this, but I'm not gonna. I might not go too into it because obviously they're looking at a history of hip hop and how and it all does come into it here because they're talking about American stuff, right? But it does come into it, like like Malcolm McLaren. We played the song and, and we pointed out that all the people, all the hip hop guys in in the video, the breakers and everything was like American. So, but that was showing how the culture came here and, and influenced us. You know what I'm saying? And then Bionic talked about that being the first time he saw hip hop, and then it was on. So that's the story they're gonna tell here, which is an important story. But I, I'm I'm here listening out for, you know. Where's the UK rap, the UK names getting mentioned? He mentioned Christmas rapping, but I think he he um he accidentally did he said Curtis Blow instead of um Dizzy Heights. Unless that was a unless that was a version of a Curtis Blow record. Um, I mean, I, I think uh, I'm not wrong in saying that was the first release by a female rapper. So you know that's an early uh, track and an important track that you don't really hear very much about no. at all. Uh, what else was around about that time? There was um, there was obviously the Jocko Henderson rap. Uh, I'm not sure whether that was 80 or back end of 79, but that seemed pretty early. There was uh, Funky Up by The Sequence as well. That can't come in. That was a Sugar Hill track, which again, you know, goes down as an early rap track. So there was a few bits and bobs that were circulating just around that time um, on the back of Rapper's Delight. Because obviously when Rappers the Light came along, you know, it was a completely new thing. Um, and, and it was seen very much as a novelty at the time. You know, I don't think many people thought there was going to be a whole culture that came out of, uh, of this, you know, what, what became hip hop. And, and, and for a few years, I think it was regarded as a bit of a novelty that, um, you know, there was a lot of novelty kind of rap still on the Wicker Rap which was had a great groove groove records in london um did that you know and i think what's that wicker rap and it said groove records i don't know if that means it's going to be a london a uk rap record or just a, a uk label wicker oh my god i'm, I'm writing wicker like um like a wicker man yeah and <laughs> grizzle leng said most stuff started in England goes back to deep occult magic. And then he starts talking about Wicca. Yeah, but when you look at the screen, it says Wicca. Like, as in Wicca, Wicca, Wicca. What? <laughs> that sounds like a, I don't know, that sounds like a joke thing. Um, Wicca rap. Let's, let's spell it right then, if that's what he's talking about. Wicca rap. Everything seems to be about rapping, like Christmas rapping, chip shop rapping. So it's like, yeah, all this novelty. So is Wicca rap a type of actual um, rap, like a type of, I don't know, is it like, yeah, rap, rap in something in Wicca? This does sound like a cult magic, man. Um, Wicca rap, UK7. I, I need that. Like, let's just, let's, where should I read this from? Discogs. They don't usually have much information on there, man. 81. Groove production. Magic rap. <laughs> Genre, electronic hip-hop. Wicker Rap and All Wrapped Up. Those are the names of the two records. Like, what is this, man? And the thing is, I can play it and it will probably sound American. Even if it's British, I won't be able to tell if it's British or American. Do you know what I mean? Everything is in this realm. Yeah, <laughs> everything is in some type of rap. Some type of magic rapping. Uh, Terra Slim would not be impressed. Um... I don't. I can't tell. If anyone can tell me if this is British, she said something about that being something. Something. Um, yeah, pressed in nineteen eighty one in UK on Groove Records. But who are the artists? Right, let's look them up. Yeah, let's look up who they are. Because this obviously cool. I know some things used to get like come out here. Yeah, but it don't mean that they was from here. All right. Okay, the evasions in 1980, the Sugar Hill Gang introduced rap music to mainstream UK audience with the single with the hit, um, mainstream UK audience with the hit single "Rappers Delight." Over the next couple of years, a number of British music acts released rap singles, but most were novelties, such as Kenny Everett's "Snot Rap," "The Brat," 
gosh, there was a brat, the brat from before the, the brat, Chalk Dust and Roland Rat Superstars Rat Rapping. Um, I haven't played any of them. I've played novelty records, but I haven't played any. We might have to play all of them, to be honest. But we shouldn't just stick to novelties, right? right? But he's saying not... Um, IBM C saying not British. The Evasions was in similar vein. The Axe was... Songwriter Adam Adrian Sear, producer, blah, blah, blah. But you're saying it's not, it's not telling me if they're British or not, but it's acting like it is. Um, so you're saying these men are not British, nah? I know these ones are, though, innit? Let's look this up then. We're going to keep that thing open. I've got a cold today, you know. That's why I'm wrapping up warm. It's cold anyway, but I've got a cold coming and I can't afford to have a cold right now. Um, it's not the one. Um, Kenny Everett, Snot Rap. Yeah. Wait, let's Google that first. I want to see years. Snot Rap, you know. What a violation. What? I just want to know what year this is. Kenny Everett single Snot Rap performed in character as aging Hell's Angel Sid Snot. Reached number eight in the charts in 1983. Um, <laughs> Grizzle said Roland Rap was on everything in like 89 to early 90s. Got banged that song. Remember that Roland Rap superstars. I remember the Roland Rap thing like. A little bit, you know what I'm saying? I'll pull it up as well. But if 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 Roland Rat is not to 89, then I'm not playing it today. We'll get to it later. But this is it's saying it's 83, so I can play this. I'm still sticking around 83, 84. It's a rap. The thing is, like, they're mocking the thing, innit? That's why it didn't get, like, respected. Because they're just, like, this is what it was. Like, these are the people who are doing this shit, who are the people that said this is a fad. Who they, These people didn't ever believe in it. They were like, oh, this rap thing's a fad. Let's make a rap record because there's this fad going on at the moment. And they've done it for a laugh. So I, I get the thing of not really rating them. Do you know what I'm saying? Um, because... Yeah, you're not really. They're not. It's not hip hop culture. Do you know what I'm saying? And it's slightly just a mockery of hip hop culture. If anything, I mean, I'm not seeing much hip hop going here. But although you look at some of the early hip hop culture, they are dressed funky and all that. <laughs> <laughs> this is going, they think it's all musical mess. It's a rap. At least he's going, are they, uh, he's, he's trying to say it's not, I hope. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, they think it's not real, but I'm doing it kind of thing. You know what I'm saying? I hope he was trying to rep there, man. But um, Grizzle said pretty good production even back then. Yeah, I mean, yeah. The production and all that is kind of all right. I mean, it's better than some of the serious rap we'd been playing right but he probably had access to better production teams and studios so
this is a long ass record, you know, it's not even halfway through. But I wanted to say, like, I said, oh, at least he's respecting the thing, like, oh, they don't take it serious. But I don't know, if, well, I don't know the more I listen to this, I don't think he is, you know, I think he's mocking it. I think he's also saying, oh, they don't take it seriously. But yes, yeah, it's, it's a rap. To the, well, it's just the way he's saying it's a rap, it's like, it feels like a, like a belittling. It feels like he's undermining, if I'm honest. He's like, oh, yeah, they're not rap. I can do it too, kind of thing. Yeah, whatever, kind of thing. Do you know what I'm saying? Because um, I'm saying, yeah. Um, it's probably all done on old tape machines. These vinyls will be all worth a fortune now if people have them. Um, can you find out if these old songs are rare? Um, old stuff are rare. Too, I found a lot of it is. Yeah, probably, man. I, I, I'm gonna let this play through. to see what else. Just I'm still trying to work out if he's a op. I feel like he's a op to hip hop, to be honest. I don't. I'm not. I feel like he's mocking, but maybe I'm wrong. And you just keep talking, you just you're going, I oh, look, it's easy. Look, we rap, yeah, it's easy, it's too easy. Rap. Look, you just make it up as you call them all, so nobody knows if you're doing it wrong and you can chuck in a word like circumcision, because we ain't going in for your official, it's a rap. Ah, uh, confirmed, he's fully mocking it. He's fully mocking um He's fully mocking hip hop. IBMC said Kenny's dead, so don't worry about it. Grizzle Lang said trans drag. <laughs> I, mean, I didn't want to comment about that at that point, but you know what I'm saying because I'm 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 for equality for all. But I was gonna say that you know in this day and age they would accuse that of like trying to have some kind of agenda or whatever. <laughs> 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 That's the end of that anyway. Nuff Prop said no, Tom McDonald wasn't the first person to mock rap. Yeah. This pagan here. <laughs> uh, Kenny Everett. I mean, I know the name Kenny Everett, but I don't really know nothing about Kenny Everett either. Let me just look up who that is. Um, Kenny Everett. 
um, was an English radio DJ. There's a lot of radio DJs. It, them other like Alan and Blewett. Like, ha, don't get me wrong. This I was bigging up Alan and Blewett because it's it's entertaining. Like, it's interesting that this kind of dynamic was going on. But even that is making a ch- and I was calling it a banger. But it's making the chip shop song out of rappers delight. It was mocking hip hop as well. Them guys, and this is why they don't they don't really get. They're not giving them super flowers. Like they were mocking. Do you know what I'm saying? Enough prop said when was this? I was a that was eighty three, I believe. I was eighty three. We just came across it randomly because I'm watching an interview um, with uh, on All City Steve with a DJ Greg Wilson, and it was actually a different name that I looked up from that, and then it led us to that. Um, Grizza said your probs all remember Roland Rat a bit. I, I do remember Roland Rat, man, of course. Um, here we go. Let's look at this guy because he he's 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 an op already. Um, English DJ, television entertainer, after spells on pirate radio and Radio Luxembourg in the mid sixties, he was one of the first DJs to join BBC Radio's newly created BBC Radio One in sixty seven. It was here that he developed his trademark voices and comical characters, which he later adapted for television. I think there was a lot more comical stuff on the radio back then, like, um, and radio was a more, you know, it was a more prominent place to go to for entertainment of all all sorts, right? Everett was dismissed from the BBC in seven, 1970 after making a flippant comment on air after a news item concerning a government government minister's wife. He was later reinstated at the BBC, working on both local and national radio. But in autumn of 1973, when commercial radio became licensed in the UK, he joined Capital Radio. Um, is he is he passed away? Is that why when someone said he's dead, I don't know if they went literally or that his rapping's dead. Yeah, in '95. Um, I'm not going to read his whole thing, obviously, but. I was just going to see about his life. Um, that was his early life. Um, he was... Well, he was diagnosed with HIV in 1989 and died in 1995. Um, Everett openly supported the Conservative Party. I was about to give him an RIP. I was about to give him an RIP and see what this gay rights thing is and maybe give him props, but let's just read this properly. Everett openly supported the UK's Conservative Party under Margaret Thatcher huh? and made publicity, um, publicity appearances at conferences and rallies. However, as a closeted gay man, he would face criticism for the hypocrisy of supporting a Conservative government that enacted Section 28, a clause of the Local Government Act which made it illegal for councils to promote gay rights and issues. He was diagnosed with HIV... And died in 1995. Well, I'm going to say RIP anyway. Like I did with OJ the other day anyway. But, yeah. Get out of here, man. In the bin with him, Kenny Everett. About about you're making a song mocking rap. And you was, a, you was literally on the radio. On the, like one of the main platforms of media control of the time. And you promoted Thatcher. Out of here. Out of here, mate. All right, what was the other one? The Bratz Chalk Dust. Let's look that one up as well. I might look up Roland Rat quickly, but it, like I said, if it's much later, I don't want to stay on novelty rap too much. We've done too much novelty rap. Next week, next week we're moving forward. Next week we're going to go to like um, 85. Eight. We're going to go to the Wikipedia of UK hip hop and go to the next section of like what's. So this is 82 Chalk Dust. Is this going to be the audio and that one's... That one looked like more of a video. Oh, it's Top of the Pops. Is this going to be the same video? That one looks like a better quality version of it. So what's this? 82, yeah? So this is the same year as um, Dizzy Heights. Roger Kidder, but we know him as the Brat. And Chalk Dust, the umpire, strikes back. Oh, shit. 
Mm. Mind just playing tennis on top of the pops. A bit of a battle rap there. Call yourself an umpire or a screwball. Play on. You're being rather naughty. Kindly play on. Oh, I will not play on, man. I want the referee. You fetch the referee, man. You don't fit to be called an umpire. I won't play on until you change your claw. You didn't even see that. Claw. I come over here to play it. This is kind of mad, you know, because this is like if this is on um, top of the pops, yeah. This is like theatre again or whatever, but it's like it's literally just like a acting theatrical piece. It doesn't even feel like a song, but it's on top of the pops. Gotta be honest, like British humour, I always felt like I'm probably gonna get slaughtered for this. I always felt British humour was kind of trash. You know what I'm saying? I never liked a lot of, never really liked much British comedy even later on for many, many years. Um, let me see some comments. Nuff Props, I think, was asking when, when's this? I think we answered that before. Um, Nuff Props said, Was a big comic homosexual? No problem with that. Still a crossover between the music hall and TV back then. My dad was in theatre lighting. And subsequently got into TV work. Lots of the comedy was on the social on at the social clubs. Yeah, I can imagine it. Because yeah, when you go to see like stand up and that, it's in the same environment. You're going to see it at a club, isn't it? So you, comedy things have open max. I can see where there'd be a crossover in that, but you can also see they don't like hip hop culture, isn't it? Like <laughs> these guys. Um, I, I I don't know if there is any of them that's actually crossed over with that. Um, in the UK from this that would actually yeah also respect and love hip hop culture um, IBMC said you heard that train poem from the 40s maybe the 50s UK thing nah I don't think so man I'll look that up but we had we have had it mentioned that like, some poetry obviously is also relevant but we haven't I haven't looked into that so I don't know if I'm going to go go all the way down that road yet I think at some point you know at some point soon I've got to move I do have to move forward to the next. I'm not going to do it today though. Today I'm going to stick with reggae. I'm going to go back to the reggae influence a bit. And um, Nightmare with Auden, 1936. Uh, maybe I'll pull it up. I'll, we'll, we'll, we'll give it a little look. Jump dust. I want to see my lawyer. There was jump dust. You're the pick of the world, man. You pick on me because of who I am. I'm not playing on and I don't give a damn. The bull wasn't out, it's a goddamn lie. I won't play on and I think I'm gonna cry. A jump dust. I wanna see my daddy that was jump dust. Ugh. Boring. I'm going to have to shoot you now. You're boring. Get lost, man. You're the kids. I'm sorry about this, you tedious little rat. Uh, I'm sick of you. I'm sick of you too, man. The umpire strikes back. Uh, get lost. <laughs> Uh, well, we just heard the noise, like, no actual... Like, where's the... Um... You're not fit to be called a human being. I was talking to myself. <laughs> They're lasers and that. Yeah, they should have at least shot tennis balls at him. Or, like, I'm thinking of Bugsy Malone, didn't it? Because it looked like one of them Bugsy Malone guns. At least, like, shoot pie at him or whatever, do you know what I mean? Um, Grizz, I said, yeah, like, Iceberg Slim USA... All the poetry, original pimp style rap was like 89, early 90s. It was too gangster hip hop style, I guess. Yeah. No, that's facts. It was, um, that's facts with that stuff. All right, I'm going to look up this Nightmare with Auden. 
Let's see about that. Performed by Benjamin Britten. So it's going to be performed by that different people and that, right? 1936. Go on, then. Mail crossing the border, bringing the check and the postal order. Letters for the rich, letters for the poor. The shop at the corner of the girl next door. Pulling up, B took a steady climb. The gradient's against her, but she's on time. But I wonder, can you tell me, like, obviously, they're saying this was, I don't know when this was created, right? Was this like, was this made in 1936 or is it just a performance? Well, it looks like it could be, right? Um, Nightmare performed by Benjamin Britten, taken from Nightmare documentary. Um, yeah, 1936, the documentary was 1936, yeah? I'm going to pull it up because there was a bit of a volume problem at the beginning. I'm going to pull it up. But yeah, there's some, there is some bars... Um, it's a two-bar hip-hop style, right? So you're allowing, bro. <laughs> man's dissing him like, yo. Man, IBMC said, Orden's got a couple bars. And Chris has said, two-bar hip-hop style. It's the 30s, bro. <laughs> but he was saying some stuff, in it? It sounded like kind of political or whatever. Reload, then it pull up, pull up. The night mail crossing the border, bringing the check and the postal order. Letters for the rich, letters for the poor. The shop at the corner of the girl next door. Pulling up, B took a steady climb. The gradient's against her, but she's on time. Alright, I'm with you, Grizz. I see what you're saying. You're saying each two bars it changed, yeah? So he was just doing the two. It's, I can't remember what that type of poetry is called. That's a type of poetry, isn't it? Where it just rhymes two bar, two bar, two bar, two bar, yeah? But, you know, Tupac, Dear Mama, is that style. Every single, and you don't, it's so, like, it's so smooth how he delivers that those verses, and it's so, like, passionate, and, like, it just hits you, that you don't even notice that. I noticed it years later, I was, when I used to study lyrics, I was listening, I was like, yo, he's doing that two-bar, two-bar thing, and I think I'd learned about that, like, about poetry at school, and I was like, oh, that's because he's into poetry, he was writing poetry before rapping, right? So he decided, I think he consciously decided to write um, Dear Mama in that style. Um, Grizzle said, you know his stuff going to get remixed now by a big known UK rapper and hit number one. Um, IBMC said the visuals are very hip-hop. Yeah, I've, as soon as I saw the, the picture of the thumbnail, I was thinking that. I was thinking, oh, this looks like it's going to be quite hip-hop. Um, Grizzle Leng said, battle rappers do it to make it punchy on every end of the bars. Um, it's original science of rap though. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. It is, it is original science of rap. Cotton grass and woolen boulder, shoveling white steam over her shoulder, snorting noisily as she passes. Silent miles of wind bent grasses, birds turn their heads as she approaches, stare from the bushes at her blank faced coaches. Sheep dogs cannot turn her course, they slumber on with paws across. In the farm she passes, no one wakes but a jug in a bedroom gently shakes. Yo! Do you know what? Like, it's abstract as well, though. This is like Task Force, man. You know what I'm saying? Like, this is like Wu Tang or like, like I'm hearing like Ghostface. You know what I'm saying? I'm hearing like some Ghostface and Chester P in there, man. I'm telling you. Uh, in the kind of things being said. Dawn freshens. The climb is done. Down towards Glasgow, she descends. 
towards the steam tugs, yelping down the blade of cranes, towards the fields of apparatus, the furnaces, set on the dark plain like gigantic chessmen. All Scotland waits for her. Yeah, Grizz said the samples. I think you're talking about what I'm hearing in it. RZA samples. Old, you're right. I, I was talking about the lyrics, though. I was talking about the lyrics, but yeah, and the type of music that's in there as well. That it sounds like that kind of thing. RZA will sample Shaolin style. Yeah, mad. In the dark glens, beside the pale green sea lochs, men long for news. Letters of thanks, letters from banks, letters of joy from the girl and the boy. Receipted bills and invitations to expect new stock on visit relations and applications for situations and timid lovers declarations and gossip, gossip from all the nations. New circumstantial news, financial letters with holiday snaps to enlarge in letters with faces scrawled in the margin. Letters from uncles, cousins and aunts. Letters to Scotland from the south of France. Letters of condolence to highlands of lowlands. Notes from overseas to Hebrides. Written on paper of every hue. The pink, the barnet, the white and the blue. The chatty, the catty, the boring and boring. The golden and fish all the hearts are boring, ever stupid, short and long, the type to the bridge and the spell to watch. Now he's going in, no, he's and he said. Sleep. That's what I was thinking, bro. He, he just decided, yo, this bit, I'm going, that's, yo, the beat switch, and we're going to go hard. You know what I'm saying? Chris Hayes said double time, G. Yo, that was Graham. Man was doing Graham. Oh, DMB, Chris has said DMB, MC. Guy went in on the first two bars. Yo, I'm glad. I almost said I wasn't gonna do this. I'm glad that I did this. This is sick. Dreaming of terrifying monsters, or a friendly tea beside the band at Cranston's or Crawford's. Asleep in working Glasgow, asleep in well set Edinburgh, asleep in Granite Aberdeen. They continue their dreams. <coughs> but shall wake soon and long for letters. None will hear the postman's knock without a quickening of the heart. But who can bear to feel himself forgotten? <laughs> Chris Hayes said he went pee money there. <laughs> Yo. That was epic. I'm just gonna I'm just keeping it one hundred. That was epic, yo. Nightmare by W.H. Auden, yeah, performed by Benjamin Britton. Man's name's Benjamin Britton. That sounds like a sick UK rapper name, Benjamin Britton. You know what I'm saying? Man's Chris, I said, easy, best rap song ever. I think that's the first UK, I think we just changed everything because that, I, I wasn't even going to count this. I was going to add a poetry thing, I'm not really counting it, but I wasn't thinking about poetry over music. That was 19... 36. Do you know how many times I've changed who I said the first? I've uploaded so many videos saying this is the first UK rapper. I know actually this one is. No, actually, we've done it again. We've done it in. We've done it again. But the only thing is, because it was written by W. H. Auden and performed by Brit Benjamin Britton, it's kind of a Drake, Dr. Dre thing. He's got a ghostwriter, although it's out in the open, so I don't know if we can count him. <laughs> um, Grizzle said I was on the phone to Big H not long ago, done tunes with him back in the day. Bun pump P Money. <laughs> Listen, yeah. Bun P Money for it. There's a reason I'll say Bun P Money as well, still, just because certain things that came out a long time ago and I feel like he just didn't he didn't get cancelled for them. Yeah, but um Yeah, you know, people who know know what I'm talking about. But P Money is still a goat though. I'm not going to take away from P Money that like he's one of the greatest. Um, Alright, where was we? Let's go back to the interview and see. Um, Grizz, I said that was Rizzo on the beat. Um, I'm, IBMC says Shakespeare is all bars, though. Yes, it's been mentioned Shakespeare a few times, but I don't really. Like, I'm trying to move forward. I'm trying to move forward tonight to 1984 and 85, but it's like. I'm I'm stuck in this era. They keep going. They keep bringing me back, forever. But we just went back to the thirties. I think the the B side, which was called All Wrapped Up, the instrumental got got kind of a lot of plays, and but the Wicker Rap became a a commercial hit. And um... the Wicker Rap, that's what we were looking into, right? Well, I think I need to turn this down now. I don't know how loud that's playing, but definitely up. I turned it really loud because that last thing was quiet. So I'm gonna put this down quite a bit. Well, let me know as well, guys. If if ever that like, my level to the le level, whatever I'm playing is is a bit like drastically different, let me know. Uh, 
Um, so, you know, I think it was just looked upon as a little bit of a, yeah, you know, it, it'll be here today, but gone tomorrow. I don't think people had any conception that it had last until uh, 1982 and the message from Master Flash and Furious Five. And I think at that point, you had a socially conscious lyric. Um, it was talking about real life. It was gritty. It, people anywhere in any urban environment could identify with the lyrics on that record. And I think that's when it was really born as, you know, rap as it became like um, fully formed in a sense, uh, you know, with that record. But beforehand, it was just party records, really, wasn't it? You know, and a lot of the time it was over the top of kind of disco grooves. The message, and it literally was a message, wasn't it? It was such a powerful track. It, uh... And I, I talked about this on the last episode when I, and I draw the comparison from Dizzy Heights to the Nutriment record, London Bridge, um, because that was kind of classed as the first political UK rap record. And uh, it's like a similar thing happened in my head. I was like, well, this seemed like it was all the party rap that was happening here as well. And then that became like a serious record. Um, and then I guess probably loads of other people got inspired to do that kind of serious stuff as well. I don't, I, maybe it's interesting to look at um, Nutriment in line with the message um, when the message came out. Uh, for its time it was uh it was incredible to hear that it was so you know basically you know it's quite it was very political as well wasn't it yeah no it was it was just like full on in your face giving you mm. the truth you know? and um and we haven't had that before you know so it was a snapshot from the streets and as i say people all over the place they didn't have to be in in new york in the bronx or whatever the, if they were in Moss Side or Brixton, you know, or, or Toxteth in Liverpool. They, heard they could it. identify with the sentiments of that Yo. immediately. And uh, it was a great track as well, you know. It was mm. a full track. Uh, I mean, we, at that point, uh, call that uh, type of music electro-funk. Uh, and how we defined it was, um, you know, the, the music was changing around about back end of 81, probably. It really started to notice certain tracks that were standing out um, as having electronic elements and bringing them more to the fore. I mean, one that I always kind of mention and, you know, I don't think people realize how original it sounded when it first came out was um, he trained you're the one for me, mm. you know, we had these kind of choppy synth keys at the start. And it was, there was some kind of new sound in there. And then on the back of that, you had things like, um, uh, time, um, time by Stone, and um, you have an Italian track, Electra Feels Good, um, and it was kind of just touching into these new sounds, but they're all um, in random places at this point in time. It wasn't, we hadn't nailed it down. In fact, we didn't call it Electro Funk in those initial stages. This is interesting still, but obviously he's, I don't know, he's not addressing the UK. I'm gonna just let it play a little bit and see if see this, let's see if if another UK person gets mentioned for it. Maybe just one more and for us to look up. But um, otherwise, I'm gonna go back to some of the other stuff I've, I've been I've been waiting to do. The first term that I remember was there was a track on Prelude. It was it followed on from You're the One for Me, and it took it further down this electronic route. It was called um, Electric Funk on a Journey, and the instrumental kind of dub side that was huge on the black scene and so there were enough of these records now there were half a dozen that, that people started kind of saying can you play that electric funk record you know mm -hmm. and just mean the, the the one on prelude there was a track out i think it was around may of 82 which was the same one that planet rock came in on import i remember and it was called um electrophonic funk Funk spelled P H O N K. I'm a I'm a, I'm gonna um I might watch a bit more of this in my own time. I'm watch a bit more of this in my own time and see if there's any other bits to pull out from it that I should be talking about um and playing or addressing, right? Um but for now I'm gonna leave that because it's a long, long interview. Um so where was we? Okay, there's one other thing right I wanna do. The main other thing I said I wanted to go back to, because last week I played the clip of Bionic from London Posse 
saying that a guy called Daddy Willie, why for that? Um, I don't know, I should stop saying that. Let's stop being ridiculous. Um, was the first rapper he kind of on the dub sound that um he heard um rapping Cockney and um so I played this. I played this Young Lion versus Saxon, nineteen eighty four. Was it? Was it Saxon? No, I might not have been. No, I played it with the Jam Down Rockers. That was 1985. So we've got a 1984 one there. Jimmy and Daddy Willie really Young Lion. Here's an actual video of them rapping. I'm going to play that in a sec. I'm going to play that in a sec. Young Lion Sound in Sheffield. What? Now we're going to play one of these videos. Because last time was just audio. And I just want to like play this guy and look out for the the Cockney. Let's look out for the Cockney accent, right? Which one, Mr. Palmer and Young Lion Sound? Which one should I play, man? The one in Sheffield, or Jimmy and Daddy Willie? Because we know Daddy Willie's the name he said, right? <coughs> <laughs> Obviously, the sound quality on this. I, I saw this clip a, a bit of it the other day. And I was thinking, well, this clip, the sound is difficult. I'm going to have a little listen to it anyway. Um, Grizzle Lang said, heavy Yardy influence. Yeah, so so last um, episode, because London Posse always seem to get credited as the first to kind of have a UK accent in, in the proper UK hip-hop scene that came later. I wanted to listen to them and hear them say where they got it from, yeah? So we all know it kind of came from reggae, the, the sound system thing anyway. But what Bionic of London Posse was saying was that man in the reggae scene in the UK was already rapping in a UK kind of Cockney accent here and there. And that's where he got it from. So he he said this guy, Daddy Willie, was the first person he heard spitting on reggae in a Cockney accent. And to me, that's probably the most significant thing I've heard like as far as the lineage of where that comes from. And... um. Grizzle said, sounds like some early gram. And 100%, like, yeah, the lineage to gram goes straight there as well, innit? That went to gram, it went to jungle, it went to hip-hop. Um, but I made the connect. we make the connection to hip-hop directly. And, and, and they don't obviously get made a connection to hip-hop so much because obviously hip-hop's from America, yeah? Hip-hop's from America, so we're taking something American and people are rapping American. But Bionic is showing that it was these men in the reggae thing that made man actually do it in a kind of British way. I'll just play this a bit more, see if I can kind of kind of catch any of the accent. It's hard to though, isn't it? I'll, I'll try one of the others if, if this one's not easy to hear. <laughs> I can hear it, you know. I can hear it, but it sounds bad, doesn't it? Um, Grizzle said, that's right, had influences in jungle, rap and gram when it was all sick then. Yeah, I, I'm going to try and find another one. I'll reset my camera again. I'm having all the technicals today. But one technical I'm not having is my sidecar crashing. Every episode, my sidecar just crashes. I have to reset it all the time. And today, every other technical I'm having, but no sidecar problem. Um... Uh, let's play one more. Where was that Sheffield one? Let's see what this one sounds like. They're just playing the rhythms right now. I want to see the spitting. Come on. 
so hard to hear it man there's a length to like dirty goods yeah 100% I might have to just go back to the one that I played last time because the sound was actually alright or just one of these audio ones because the audio ones might be better because it's probably going to have taken the recording from a line in somewhere um, where these videos are probably off a really old, like, rubbish camera. Let's just try this one more. You know why man can't hear it? It's because it's some old, rubbish camera microphone. And these men are playing that music loud. <laughs> we put them speakers in there are playing loud. Because that's what that sound system thing was about. Like, how loud can you get it? <laughs> you know <what> I'm saying? <laughs> um, let's go with the Saxon and see how that sounds, though. Let's see how this sounds. If you don't drive a car, well, why you have to try it? Me the in my yard with my own kind of magic. If it's I'm on daddy fish with the brand new lyric. But I'm on daddy fish, I'm a resonated. But the hear them my lyric, I'm a resonated. But I'm on daddy fish, run your mind, me a tonic. But I'm on daddy fish, eh, lyric, lyric, eh. But I'm a open of them town hall. But I'm on as a young man, come for Ram down hall. But if I'm on pan, they might judge a no man on stall. But they go up, they might come. So same, same last time I did this. I did a different one, but I was I got I, I got to try to work out who Young Lion Daddy Willie is in a, in all of this. That's what makes it hard. <laughs> When I talk to the scene, no people don't realize that Tony Rank massive in this country and broad. Seen? I like up to prove a point, but now look no competition. Me just a show people say, anywhere any man go, I like dress down style, I like no partial scene. Me the kill which part of England them come from. Right now I go let off some originals so make I get through this one scene. Dedicated to all women and man, punk, hoot and cheer gun. Seen? Right now I like born and raise the bricks and mother and father who want to make gun. Taking a style of fashion, grow that people seen. Dedicated to Ruby, my brethren, dedicated to Daddy Winnie, dedicated to Bigger Jimmy, seen each other and Ines. Every dog got to be bitch and every bull to a cow, say every dog got to a bitch and every bull to a cow. Every dog got to be bitch and every bull to a cow, say every dog got to a bitch and every bull to a cow. Me talk for the microphone, but I might let any bit on. They put any info in that a volcano. That's where you hear the jungle coming. When he in a rush, I know you find my stone. And in a South America, I'm with a ring on. You hear me from the microphone, I end it with on. Well, this is something that I want you to know. The mountain starts quick, and they catch me out. The dog will run after they catch him. Go, wow, 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 wow. When me drop a microphone, you know me end it with on. When you hear them style of fashion, what me talking now. I sleep in our bed, my rest, my head from below. I want a little pressure, me open window. You look up on reflection, it's not in the wrong. It's going hard though. Wait a sec. Was that a bit rude, the British bit there? Little, yeah. That one line. Yeah, yeah. 
Pull it up, pull it up. We said the LO and that. Yeah, <laughs> see the, the, the cockneys in there. Hey, can I See, the thing is that I'm trying to work out is that Daddy Willie who he's talking about? If he's saying that's the guy who's doing the thing, I, I, that might be in it. I'm going to have to get Gleam, who was not here today, to listen back to this and try to confirm to me if that was my man or not. Because obviously, there's a whole, this is a whole um, two sound systems clashing there, isn't it? Young Lion, Jesus Christ, it's like they are restaurants are dying. <laughs> yes, I'm saying Young Lion if it's the same guy. Special request to all whistle party in the area, right? Come here on a blue all night. Johnny Alco, 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 Alright, I'm, I'm gonna try to confirm if that was him, and um, I guess we'll come back to. Um, I guess that kind of cut. That's one of the most important things I just wanted to cover, yeah, because that is the lineage to UK rap, yeah, to UK hip hop. Um, and I don't. I've been here a couple of hours already. I don't really want to jump forward yet because I said I'm gonna save that for the next show. Um, so I might wrap it up soon. What I'm going to do is play the beginning of this electro rock thing because this is an hour long thing again. It's another long video. I'm not going to do the whole of. But I did Dizzy Heights on here. So I just want to have a bit of a watch of this. And uh, this is a, this is 1985. So it's, it is just after the era that we've been doing. But obviously the rappers in it had been around a while and are also from before. So I'm going to do a little bit of this and then I'm probably going to wrap it up for the, um, for the show today. And then next week we'll um, I try and get mystery mc sorted to join again either would we either we record it beforehand or we test it out properly and um i think i might know what the problem was so if i could if i've worked out the problem then i'll just meet with her and do a good test run and i will do it properly but yeah all right electro rock hip-hop uk hip-hop doc 1985 so this must be like the, one of the first documentaries of uk hip-hop that there's ever been well, it says no american something come to rap with us i need to know what that is it might be later but i need to know what that is Pull up. Uh, this is sick because this is actually like um, this is an event that happened at the Hippodrome, right? So 
they actually made a dub plate. They're rapping about the event that's about to take place. That's actually hard. We don't make that kind of effort. Break <laughs> down. <laughs> That was hard. I can't quite tell the lyrics, but no, something about no American stars come to rap with us. Um, so this like the they're like <laughs> this in America kind of like back and forth was starting from back then. That's mad. And um, I I kind of stopped. I kind of decided it was corny us doing that at a point. But I had a record out with Ed Scran, right? People who follow me know Ed Scran, who was in Deadpool, became a big actor. And it's mad because I saw him the other night. I went to the Foreign Beggar show, and he was there. And um, they had our record, like a little stack of our re old record, because it came out under Foreign Beggar's label, that like seven inch on the table, man. And I was like, Yo, look, look, they got our thing right here. And he was like, yeah, that's, he still thinks that's one of the best records he ever made. Um, but yeah, we was literally, it was called Idols and we were literally like cussing about Americans coming here trying to, uh, and we're doing shows as the support act, but we're better than them kind of thing. And uh, yeah, there was a lot of shots on it. Oh yeah, one lyric that stood out to me there was they said, in the hip hop scene. So they were calling it, you know, at this point it was a scene, right? Obviously, you know what I'm saying? But it's just, it's interesting to hear it like, um, phrased that way um, back then. So is that Mystery MC? She's the one who sent me this. <coughs> um, yeah, Family Quest. So that must be her, isn't it? Because how many other like, female rappers in a group like that? White girl. Like, that must be her right there. And it showed Dizzy Heights um, talking, which was interesting. Obviously, I've already seen him rapping on this. When I get to the bit of him rapping, I'm going to leave it there. I just wanna, I'm just i just wanting to see the kind of beginning. Do you know what I'm saying? What's Nuff Prop saying what about? He said what? What, what? What are you saying? What's what? Time out. Time out. Time out. You US people better watch out, you know. Yeah. <laughs> 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 that's what I'm saying. You US people better watch out, you know. Man, well, that's hip hop, don't it? You're hungry, rep your ends, like, like respect us. And I'm from Harlem, around the way. I got my boy here, Street Elite. This is Sammy Sike. And we're you psych and you like you the bum. This is Jesse G, known as Little Reed. L I L R E E. And we got Keith and Lee, my man over here, on the cover. Americans do. I go back to my nerd. Show. That's the way it is. I'll tell you his name. What? Right. Get his name by his joke. Some of these. The R T Y. That's dirty. The how? Telling no lies. Yeah, enough props just said this is hard. I mean, it really is, isn't it? Like, I don't, you might have missed me playing this. Like, so I played, um, because Mi um, Mystery MC sent this to me when I was saying that I felt Dizzy Heights was also a novelty rapper. She was like, no, nah, I watched this five minutes in. So I already played from five minutes in, but I didn't play the intro. And what's exciting about this is it's just like we're actually seeing the scene. This is this, you're hearing people talk, you're seeing what it actually is. Um, this is sick. And it was put together by Mike Allen. I always heard that Mike Allen was like very instrumental to putting hip hop things together and like giving it a platform. <laughs> <laughs> 
Real talk. Next week, I said I want to move forward, yeah? Which is like to 84, 85. I may just come back here. I'll, we'll watch a bit of it now, but I may just come back to this and then watch it. Watch it through because this is sick. And then just stop, like, stop along the way. When the new rappers come on, who ain't, ain't heard of yet, we'll see them rap on here and then we'll look them up and see what else they've got. <laughs> On it. Enough props saying he missed the start. No, but I, I did it um last week, unless you mean you missed the start of last week. I might yeah, it, it might have been around the start of last week still. I want to do this whole documentary, man. I've just decided I want to do this whole thing. I'm not doing it tonight. I've got, to, I've got to kind of wrap this up soon, but I'm going to do the first, like, we'll do the Dizzy Heights bit again. And then after that, I'm going to continue it next week. What's sick here is obviously like we're we're doing this whole show about hip hop, but it's about like hip, the whole culture, isn't it? We, we're we're mostly showing we're just showing rappers, isn't it? And that is, if I'm being honest, that's what it's gonna be, right? Enough props said backspin literally fire. Um, would definitely be a good year to pick up all the other stuff that was emerging. Yeah, because we've done, everything I've done so far has been like from seventy nine to eighty four. So this is the next. This is like this is the next part, isn't it? Um, but yeah, like I say, it, the Breakers was always there first, didn't it? Same in America as here. So it's like, this is a time when it all was on the stage, man. It's like, and it's just, yo, you can just see how exciting it must have been. <laughs> There's a guy coming on right now who's just signing a record deal, uh, which is really wonderful because he's, some would say, the first guy ever to bring rap to London and, generally speaking, Europe. Would you please welcome to Hip Hop at the Hippodrome, Dizzy Heights. One, two, on the microphone. Turn the I'll say it one more time. Obviously, I've done this already, but I'm going to let it play again. I, said, I was calling him a parody artist because of the Christmas rapping, and I was like, that's Christmas rapping similar to chip shop rapping. And then I saw this, and then Mike Allen said, He's the first to do it. Mystery MC earlier today said, yeah, at the time it was just accepted. Like it was a known thing that he's the first rapper. Um, and somewhere in the bars here, he says something about it being the first rapper. But like, as soon as I saw this last time, I played, I was like, oh, no, no, this ain't no nobody. This is hip hop. Do you know what I'm saying? So we have to give Dizzy Heights his flowers. Um, I would love to find him. I don't know if he's out there, whatever. Do you know what I'm saying? Someone said something to me yesterday. I was like, what happened to my guy? And he was like, Mm. He said something, maybe something to do with drugs or this and that. And then he's just saying that it wasn't just about him, it was about a few people around at that time. 
Um, but yeah, that I hope not, man. You know what I'm saying? But big him up for his contribution, man. But let's let's let him go. Oh my God. Are you feeling all right? Are you feeling all right? A little hip hop, hip hop, people at the back, you don't stop. A little hip hop, hip hop, people at the front, you don't stop. Cause I go by the name of Did They Hide. I'll come to rap to you on the mic. I'm gonna rap in a different style to let you know I'm versatile, I'm being rich. And even then, like, he's not really, and I think Miss MC said this as well. She was like, she didn't see him as rapping American. Like, on the record that I heard, he's rapping American. There's definitely Americanisms in there. But there's a few bits here where I'm not. Well, it's a different style there and all that. I didn't, it didn't sound fully American to me. You know, rapper of London town, guaranteed to make your party down. Yeah, so that's what he said. It. I'm the original the rapper of London town. Good deal. So I've really got to close. You don't stop, because I go by the name of Did They Hide. I'll come to rap to you on the mic. I'm going to rap in a different style to let you know. I'm versatile. I'm the Mike original rapper American. of London town, guaranteed to make your party down. My rap is different from the rest. So everybody knows why I'm the best. The part of London that I come from. Nobody knows I'm the number one. So when I walk around, I have a lot of fun. Get it on down to the rapping town, to the beat, y'all. Beat, beat, ah. Oh. To the beat, the beat, the beat, the beat, the beat that makes it move your feet. Hit the breakers, the house. Bubbles in the house. Rockers, the rockers, the shockers in the house. Breakers, the poppers, the lockers, the rockers. They had the girls there, man. You know what I'm saying? Remember when, <laughs> when I done my interview with Blade? Blade was like, yo. There's a female here. That's why the, <laughs> when you go to the UK hip hop dance, what went wrong? Because she was a pengers, man. What's going on, man? These like had it popping back then. Are you feeling all right? Yeah, we know this is L O N D O N, London town, London city, where all the girls are so pretty. So hold on, two, three, four, you all gonna get what you're coming for. I don't mean to brag, I don't mean to boast, but when I'm on the mic, I'm your host because I rap rhythm, I rap rhymes. Always make sure I rap is on time, the people just get, get on down, rock, roll to the funk and sound like this. We get out there, pow, pow, point, point, we're gonna shock them, and then we do that smile. Yeah, enough props said it's got little bits here and there, but definitely London or Southeast UK accent. Yeah, it, it kind of is, isn't it? It's, I've started just this whole thing has just made me start to think like the whole like claim of oh this was the first British just doesn't feel very valid. You know what I'm saying? Like maybe like all the way like they fully locked it in. Like cool, this is authentically British, but it's not like the first first. And Bionic don't say that it is either. Maybe it just got said for them. A lot of things, you know, a lot of things get said for the artists, like even the names of these things, hip hop, gram, like outsiders make the names and make the narratives a lot of the time. Um, even London Posse were called London Posse by others in America. Oh, you know. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Charlie, look at, look at my man. He's just like Charlie Chaplin over here. He's all right. He's New York style, Charlie. Look at him, Charlie. Street Elite? No, it is. For the so here's the next rapper. This is where I paused it last night. Wait, let's just hear his name. Is the winner of the London Rapping Championship, the Prince of Poetry, Junior G. Junior G. Uh, so I'm gonna pick up on this next week, and we're gonna go. Uh, let's look at who Junior G is. You know what I'm saying because. I did it last time. I said, oh, we'll look him up later. I don't want to get too into this. But now I've played it all the way from the start this time. I think this documentary is just really, really, really important by the look of things, man. Um, Nuff Prop said, fits the hype. I don't know. What's that? I don't know. I don't know what it is. Educate me. Is that the name of the song? You know You know this guy? Um, I couldn't tell you, but I'm going to look into it on the next one. Big up, everyone, for tuning in today. Um, it's been a bit of a messy one, if I'm being honest. Obviously, I had a number of technicals. I was trying to get Mystery MC on. I'm going to go and connect with her again, try and do an actual practice run. I'll do a proper, proper practice run. We did do a brief little check earlier, but it didn't work out afterwards the same. I think I've got a feeling I know what was going on with the sound because I did it again when she was gone and I did it last week and I solved it. 
but I'll have to test it. I'll have to give it a good test. If I give it a good test, then we'll give it another go. And I'll just get her on right at the start of the show. And um, we can just do that interview. And then we'll get back into this. We'll get back into this 1985. And then we'll start edging forward. Yeah. Big up, enough props, said peace. Um, one love to everyone else uh, out there. I may, I'm still going to do these lives, but I may slow down with some of the videos I'm rolling out and stuff. Um, because I got a. Um, I got a masters. I'm doing a masters at the moment. I'm a mental guy. Like I'm, you know, I'm running a couple of different businesses, <laughs> and doing a masters and doing all of this every week. So it might help that I do some of these long form videos in my reactions, so that I don't have to chop up so many little ones. I've still got loads of videos to chop up out of the last two episodes, to be honest. Um, but yeah, it will happen, man. Big up everyone, uh, UK legends. Episode three, and we are.